section and the construction. Thank you again. The next speaker is um, uh, a colleague of ours uh, from Salamanca, Marcello Gimenez. Thank you very much, Marcello, for accepting our invitation. So we'll talk about the perfect materials for reconstruction. Thank you, uh, Marco and um, Jose, for this invitation. Um, I, I try to talk something about the uh, new material for chest wall reconstruction. Um, some is reality and some is uh, desire of the, for the future. But, um, Have we got the slides for? Is downloading? Where is it, where is it going? No, sure. It's not there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is my disclosure. Um, uh, in my opinion, I. I, I uh, begin for saying that, the, in my opinion, 3D printed is the most promising material for chest wall reconstruction um, because uh, there are many groups working on that. Uh, the group of Antonio Atala, uh, they are printing uh, 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 biological tissue with functional capacity, uh, but they mainly print layer with uh, polymers as uh, reticular structure, and then they print uh, cell-laden um, uh, composite hydrogels, and then what they call uh, uh, sacrificial material. When the uh, structure is completed, they wash out the, the sacrificial material to produce this microchannel uh, in order to allow the flow of the um, nutrients and oxygen to the printed uh, cells. Using this uh, technique, they are able to print ears or uh, uh, mature bone. Uh, or like this group from North Carolina, they are able to print muscle and to connect to nerve and to prove the uh, functionality. But probably we have to wait for a few years and uh, we have to look for a quasi-perfect uh, material. Uh, as you know, the, uh, the ideal alloplastic material has to be resistant to infection, uh, physically and uh, chemically inert, hypoallergenic, of course non-carcinogenic, um, easy uh, incorporated by the body, durable, compatible with the X-ray, it is really important for the follow-up, um, sterile, easy to use and of course cheap and available and some of the material don't uh, meet this criteria. We have two types of uh, material. Um, we have a valerian steel, no, so we have rigid and non-rigid material. Um, non-rigid are mainly mesh, synthetics or, or biological. Uh, we all have uh, speeding using uh, uh, the previous speaker. Um, methyl metacrylate or proline, Marlex or uh, PTF. Probably we have less experience uh, using biological meshes like uh, derived from cadaveric dermis like uh, alloderm or from the uh, different uh, product of porcine or bovine like permacol or surgiment. Some of them are cross-linked in order to increase the, the strength and some characteristics of the uh, synthetic mesh are at the same time disadvantaged. For instance, the incomplete incorporation to the surrounding tissue or the susceptibility to infection. As you know, when it's occurred, we have to remove the prosthesis. Um, at the beginning, it's easy, but sometimes in late infection, it's uh, quite difficult. The characteristic of uh, biological mesh uh, include the promotion of healing at different phase of healing, like inflammation phase, proliferation, and maturation. 
um, by cellular infiltration and new vessel and also promoting the extracellular matrix exchange. But also uh, biological mesh acts like uh, biological scaffold, uh, following the principle of uh, regenerative medicine uh, being uh, some substrate for uh, platelet activation or uh, attracting the mesenchymal stem cell or increasing the level of uh, fibroblast. But if we look for hard uh, material for rigid reconstruction, we have uh, the promising osteoinductive material like polymers, um, metals, um, but also ceramics uh, from natural uh, or uh, synthetics, um, uh, biocomposites. Um, we all know titanium. Titanium is a, a metal, is uh, uh, completely inert and immune to many fluids that could cause corrosion of the implant. But offer more than this because he has a low electronic uh, conductivity, is predictable uh, with a low ion formation, high strength and resistance to fracture and high tensile strength ratio. Another uh, osteoinductive material uh, like our bioceramics, like silicate. Silicates we can uh, manufacture with different uh, shapes, with different structures um, and porosity. And we can put inside some carriers with uh, antibiotics or growth factor or uh, even anti-neoplastic uh, agents. But also we can add some nanoparticles that we can stimulate by uh, ultrasound uh, in order to attack the tumor cells. Another uh, bioceramics are uh, hydroxyapatite is uh, a material with similar uh, structure to the some minerals in, in the uh, human bone. But uh, I have to talk about the uh, acrylic resins. Acrylic resins are very interesting. There are some investigation from MIT uh, engineers uh, specialized in uh, uh, biomaterials and they, they uh, conducted an analysis of different natural materials like a bone or uh, a maker. And they found that the, some of this uh, natural uh, structure are performed by a small piece like bricks. But they are able to construct uh, um, a bone like uh, the, this uh, clavicle. But the main thing is they are able to simulate using different uh, kind of uh, uh, resins and different uh, uh, dispositions, and they can calculate the strength of the material. But when they print this uh, material, they, and they found that the uh, strength of the printed material is higher than expected. When we look for an ideal bone substitute, uh, this has to be, uh, has to have a, an osteoinducted three-dimensional structure. Contain uh, uh, osteogenic cell, but also uh, uh, growth factor uh, with uh, enough mechanical property to sustain the structure until the final uh, integrations. And of course, promoting the uh, vascularizations. But when we, uh, uh, try to design new uh, bone tissue, we have to take into account the different uh, level of the structure from macro structure to, to um, sub micro or sub nano structure because we can design at each level. Um, this is important because we can improve also the microscopic function at the level of the uh, um, union of the material with the uh, uh, surrounding tissue. And it's what we call the interface. Um, of course, chemical uh, composition is, is relevant, but uh, porosity uh, and geometry are crucial, and uh, you can see uh, next. In this investigation, uh, the uh, osteo osteoinductive potential of the calcium phosphate um, is clearly linked to the porosity 
of the surface of the material. This author conducted this uh, study comparing four different uh, calcium phosphates with similar uh, composition, but with different uh, crystal size at the surface level. As you can see here, the submicroscopic uh, crystal the, is relevant because the, they, the, the both component of with submicrocrystal they, they triggered early the bone formation, but also they uh, delay the reabsorption of the calcium phosphate and improving the bone remodeling. But the, the other thing is uh, important is in geometry. Uh, if, if we put something like this small piece of titanium in somewhere in the body, uh, the concavities, these concavities biomimetize the uh, remodeling cycle of bone, inducing bone formation in these concavities. In relation, if there is some microcapillaries, there is spontaneous bone formations. And uh, this is because, as you know, the uh, capacity of the mesenchymal stem cell to differentiate. As you know, the definition of mesenchymal stem cell is the uh, capacity to uh, addition to the plastic, some antigen uh, uh, characteristic, but also the ability to differentiate in uh, adipocytes, chondrocytes, and osteocytes. Okay, uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, research uh, in, in tissue engineering, but we, we don't have uh, uh, available tissue engineering in the market. Uh, probably the reason is what uh, this gap uh, is the, the, what they call the, the, the belly of, of death. And this is because the, there are few, few uh, uh, clinical trials, and this is because they're difficult to uh, attract funding to perform this uh, uh, trial. Um, I completely agree with uh, Sanchez and Yamanaka. They say that rules are meant uh, to be broken, especially in biology. Um, that's why uh, we, in our group, we are working uh, very close to, to three, these three guys. They are engineers working on design and new material for chest wall reconstruction. <laughs> 